Welcome friends, welcome back to the kitchen. Welcome back to Cocktails After Dark. Today we're going to step outside of the time frame that we have been working in. This, this cocktail book um, is in Spanish, published in Mexico in 1961. And I'm stepping this far forward because it's very difficult to find tequila cocktails until you get into really the mid 1960s in English cocktail books. And this cocktail book has probably a dozen tequila cocktails in it. Um, and surprisingly, they're almost all the same in terms of their composition. It's tequila, vermouth, and grenadine, or tequila, grenadine, and lemon, or tequila, vermouth, and lemon, or some variation of those, of those ingredients. And I chose a, a recipe today that is sort of... Um, the average of all of the ones that are in this book, and it's called the Cocktail Zapopan. And so we're gonna start out by putting some ice in the glass. This is a cocktail that appears to be built in the glass. How about that? Now, first ingredient, splash of grenadine. I'm gonna call that a splash. And grenadine is super easy to make. This is our homemade grenadine. We've got a video for that on our channel. Next it asks for Cinzano vermouth. Um, and I have a bottle of Cinzano vermouth, but it's not open. I've got a bottle of Dolan vermouth that is open. So I'm gonna use the Dolan because vermouth is one of those things that as soon as you open it, you start a countdown clock and you've only got really three to four months to use it um, before it it doesn't go bad. It doesn't start to taste awful, but it just starts to taste dull. And eventually it does taste awful. So it's one of those things that you have to use up quickly. And I've got a whole collection of vermouth over here at the side because Julie and I are working on something bigger for vermouth. So I want to hang on to that. I'm going to use the Dolan. I think it should be a reasonable facsimile of what's in that bottle. Although the ingredient list is almost completely different. And so the same amount of vermouth in each cup. Now this is 1961. It doesn't say what kind of tequila to use, but I'm going to assume that really what they meant was 100% blue agave tequila, in, and it's just clear. So I'm going to use that for one. And this is definitely a brand that would have been available then, um, the Jose Cuervo. For the second cocktail, I'm going to use an Añejo. Uh, tequila. No, this is a Reposado tequila, which means that it's rested and it's got some barrel aging. Not something that you would have found in 1961. Not something you would have found in 1961 at all. So, I'm supposed to stir it until it's frosty. Okay, and we finish with a maraschino cherry. Cherry in that one. Hey, Glenn. Hey, those... friends. Are you eating the maraschino cherry sugary goodness? Mm -hmm. Ha. Yes, that's all mine. Okay. <laughs> so, only a bit of a mess on the countertop. <laughs> we have from 1961. Uh, and this is an interesting this is an interesting book because it's it's pulp. Like it's it would have been on a rack in a pharmacy in the pulp fiction section kind of thing. Like it's <laughs> It really is a, 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 an inexpensive kind of throwaway book. It's not meant to be anything that you cherished. It's a dime store pulp book. So this it's is, the book for everybody. It's the cocktails for everybody. It's cocktails for everybody. Yeah. I mean, it's no, no, the, the barrier for entry for this one was, was pretty low. Cocktail Zapopan. Okay. Um, although, I don't know. In 1961, was one peso a lot of money in 1961? Oh, I'd have to do some research. I have no clue. Uh, let us know down in the, in the comments below. Was one peso expensive in 1961? Okay, so two cocktails. Same cocktail, uh, Jose Cuervo, and this is the Casamigos Reposado. Okay. I'm expecting them to taste different. It smells really good. It does.
Okay. It's got a bit of a quirky, an odd Ooh. flavor to it. Like it's this lovely. One, this one's got a completely different nose. Oh yeah, no, that one definitely has the better nose on it. Mm. Okay, so this one, it, it is the Casamigos, it is the Reposado. As soon as I brought it up, I got vanilla notes and caramel and smooth what flavor. What are you doing with that? I want to taste that one again. Mm-hmm. Yeah. That fuller, there's more flavors there's to that. There's more flavors. It's complex. It's rich. Um, I really like that. But I said it was odd because I can't define it. Like, I can't define the flavor of it. It is, um, it's got the, kind of that rich flavor. Yeah. It's got a bit of sweet. Like, it's, it's a very well-balanced. Yes. So, yes. Yeah, so, I'm, I'm getting caramel vanilla, a nice sweetness, but not overly sweet, not cloyingly sweet, but balanced sweet. This one's got a bit of a sharper tone, and I... I am getting a bit of a smoky flavor, not a lot of smoky flavor, but a little bit of a smoky flavor and a smoky nose. It's sometimes really harsh because this is a pretty decent drink. Like I'm not, let's let's not kid ourselves. If you serve me this, yes. I'd be pretty happy. If I sat, I, so I'm, I'm, I'm taking from this that if I sat down at a bar and said, I want tequila, red vermouth and grenadine and toss a cherry in at the end. It would work out. I, it would work out. No matter what the combination was, I think in this in this case, I think this would work out for me. And there's a huge variation in vermouths, um, an absolute <laughs> enormous variation in vermouth. Yes. And if I just look at the, just the. Hold on. Where's the lid to this so I don't spill it? The ingredients on this one, and they're different between the two. So it starts out with wine because wine is the base ingredient. Yep. For. This one then goes sugar. This one goes alcohol. Then alcohol. Then sugar. Then water. Her aromatic herbs. Color. Caramel. And flavors. So this this is probably, I don't want to say a better vermouth, but a... a it's a different vermouth. It's a different vermouth. It's got a different flavor to it. This will be a sweeter vermouth, even though they're both sweet vermouths. What I've learned is that a, the driest, the, a dry vermouth can taste sweeter than a sweet vermouth. In the end, it doesn't matter. This cocktail is what we came here to drink today, and that's really good. I think I would drink this. I got on the winning side, though. I think, um, I think my next trip to Mexico, this is what I'm going to try. Thanks for stopping by. See you again soon.